Hey, hi everyone and welcome to the August um, Academy session. Today we're going to be looking at um, tactics, so let me share my screen and I'll go through the course material. So this week you are expected to read the content. Okay, so go through the content and um, well, you can ask me if you've got any questions. We're just going to go back through the content and then just talk about a few things. Uh, you weren't expected to do any of the positions yet, but some of you may have already had a go. Um, so let me just make sure I've got everything in the right place. So what is a tactic just to um, break the ice? How can we explain what a tactic is? So tactics are the most important thing in chess, in my opinion. So what is a tactic? I don't actually have a definitive answer to that. <laughs> Lots of different explanations of what a tactic is. Uh, William, an action or strategy carefully planned to achieve a specific end. Yep, Gonzalo, a sequence of moves. Sounds good. Any other explanations of what a tactic is? A combination of moves designed to give yourself a better position from Charlie. Sounds good. Combination of moves that give you an advantage, Marcos. Might have looked in the dictionary. <laughs> so you should all be able to see my screen uh, where I've got the booklet open for this month. Can you just confirm that you can see it? Because it doesn't have its usual green box around it. Great, okay. So um, this tactic we've got at the front um, is quite a nice one. Uh, bishop takes on e6, and then we can move the queen to f8 and the knight. Uh, forks the king on f8 and the queen on c7 so that's the introduction um now this did anyone watch this live alex and i were watching this live <laughs> this is um just to show that even the strongest players fall for quite basic tactics um so if you haven't already looked at this um this was pretty incredible um and you just played rook takes g3 um probably I mean, he would have seen that after, you know, F5, he can play Rook G4 checks. He would have seen that and probably thought, well, I can just take the pawn. But I mean, you've got to be, you've got to act suspicious when your opponent just gives you a free pawn like that. And um, yeah, he was very, he was very happy. Um, I don't know if you watched the little video clip that we put in the um, material, but I mean, oh, he goes Bishop B5 and then after King c6 which is the only move um well you guys can uh, let me know what does white play next yeah full combination not just a move please Thank you, Shivam. Yes, so give a check to gain a tempo, and then you take the bishop, and you've got f5 at the end with a discovered attack on the rook. So um, this was a you know, very, very strong player, falling for pretty basic tactic. Um, tactics occur everywhere. Another thing about tactics is if you calculate a line and it doesn't quite work, but you think it looks promising, then just shuffle the moves a bit and you might be able to come to the solution. Has anyone tried that in a game when they're thinking about it? I really want to play Rook Takes Pawn. Oh, but it doesn't work. And then you change the move order. Yeah, uh, Kenneth has. And Rhea, yeah, it's really good to be aware of that um, as a concept. Cool. Um, so I will just go back to the material. So... Yep, there's a famous quote, chess is 99% tactics. Uh, whether you believe that or not, it doesn't matter, but tactics are everywhere in chess. I remember seeing a very strong player in Division One of the Foreign CL blitz out 30 really strong opening moves and then blunder on move 32 because he didn't know the position and he fell for a tactic. So in some ways, tactics are just more important than opening theory and um, different things, aspects of chess. You've got to be aware of what's going on and understand the position. So there's a link to that video that I was talking about. You can watch that in your own time. Uh, I don't 
agree with the way he celebrated. <laughs> but anyway, it was pretty funny for the audience. Okay, so what are tactics? Tactics are moves or sequence of moves of a forcing nature that result in some kind of gain. Um, checkmate being the best result, material being second, and then maybe positional concession as well. Um, yeah, this was another interesting one. I don't know if anyone saw this game live, um, back row versus Carlson, which happened um, this week or in the World Cup. Um, so it was a very, very interesting position. Um, Carlson played very, very well. And we got to, in fact, let me just check. But yes, yeah, so we got to this position here and this is very nice. So Alex and I were watching it and actually, I'll be honest with you, when we, we were doing it in our head, obviously, we weren't moving the pieces, but we did miss something in this line. Um, oh, that's great that you watch all the games. It's really good to hear that, Gonzalo. So what should Black play here? Oh, well done, Rock. Following high-level chess is a really good way to improve. Um, presumably, some of you were watching today as well. Magnus plays two fantastic games, and Duda played... Uh, one fantastic game and became the champion. So not one, not just one move, please. Variation, because anyone can see rook d3 check. And what happens after king e4? Ah, you prefer, Gonzalo prefers Mount Watts Champions commentary. I like that because it's David and he's one of my, my good friends. But it's a, yeah, it's a little bit more basic than Jan's commentary. But Jan, I think Jan's very funny. <laughs> I, I quite like listening to him. Okay, yeah, so this was it. Uh, Black moves the rook to d3. Um, after king e4, we've got bishop f3, for king the king and queen. But obviously, um, if, if Black just takes that now, then he's just behind on material. So that doesn't work. But f5 distracts the king and the king moves out of the way and then you can just take the queen and black is completely winning. Um, so that is um, a combination from variation in Magnus's game. He didn't actually play it, but he did go on to win the game. So that's very important. And when Alex and I were watching, for some reason, we didn't see f5. So, you know, these tactics aren't, aren't so simple. Um, I'm sure we would have found it if it was our game. <laughs> um, so it's all about forcing moves. And that's why I say time and time again, look at the checks, captures and threats. Sounds boring, but it's so true. If you don't do that, you never will um, consider um, the best moves. OK, so um, this is the second um, time that we're going through um, things on Zoom. So all you needed to do for the first week was to read through the material. Um, I'm going to be going through the content in the next three weeks uh, on Zoom. Sorry, two more sessions. So we're not going to go for any of the content today, but I'm going to talk to you about the booklet, answer any questions, and then you're going to have a go at a few tactics. So tactical themes. Now, these are you're really important to be aware of. So I'm sure you've heard of them all, or maybe most of them. Um, I said to Alex, because he wrote this content, I said, oh, I've not heard of Booster. And he said, oh, I made it up. <laughs> but it, it's quite good. It's quite a good way of um, understanding about the intermediate move or the Zwischenstück. Um, so these are themes that you just have to know if you want to get better at chess. Um, so they're all listed there. I'm not going to read them out. Now, one of the other things is you just need to attack targets in your opponent's position, look out for hanging pieces and consider candidate moves. So obviously here, queen c6 wins the knight because it's a hanging piece. Um, for this one, again, just looking at a material and a square. So you can threaten checkmate and the rook. So that's a, a fork or a double attack. Again, there's some examples of this on the next slide. And then we've got a discovered attack. Hope you like our diagrams that go with them. Uh, primary themes, um, the pin or freeze. Pin and win, one of my favorite things to say. Um, again, we've got pin. So this, this is very, very common in games. Um, removing the defender, the skewer intermediate move these can be quite challenging to see um this is a fairly 
basic example of the intermediate move. Um, I talked about that earlier on the summer camp for anyone was, that was there. You move the knight to d5 and make sure your king's on b1 because if it wasn't on b1, it was on c1, it wouldn't work because black can take the queen with check. But because black takes the queen and it's not check, uh, white's got knight takes e7. And this occurs so much in games. I've seen it happen lots. And I remember it from my games as well. So watch out for that little tactic. There's the Desperado. I hope you like our diagram for that. <laughs> um, so in this position, um, if white just took the queen, then white would just be material down. So you need to take the rook first before taking your opponent's queen. Trapping pieces. Um, this is probably the most common type of trap where you go b3 and then the bishop gets trapped. You've obviously got to calculate if black can escape with a5. But it doesn't work in this game because of rook a1. Interference. We looked at this in the academy session uh, the other day. So the rook's defending the queen. If you move your knight to c6, then you're interfering and you'll be able to take the queen on your next move without it being covered by the rook. Decoys. So queen takes a knight and the king takes, we've got knight e4. Deflection, a bit of physics there. <laughs> yeah, but the intermediate move. Sorry, I only just saw that. Yeah, clearing when you just want to clear a piece out of the way. And, um, you know, I want to play knight e6 in this position, but my queen's in the way. So I take on f6 with check and then I move my knight to e6. And you can also use a tactic to clear a line. So this is um, a very common opening trap at beginner level. Uh, the pawn takes c5, and then after black takes, we've got queen a4. And that occurs in various openings. I think the Cambridge Springs as well. Um, so watch out for leaving pieces undefended in the opening. And this is the new one, the booster. So um, this is kind of, you move the same piece twice, but you need to gain some time. So here we move our queen to d5. And then when the king moves um, to h8, we go queen b5. Because obviously at the moment we can't get the queen to b5. So we use um, an extra move, which is forcing, where black has to move the king. And then we can go queen b5. And we're going to win either the rook or the knight. The queen teleports itself. <laughs> cooperation it's a position where i'd love to play rook d5 and skewer the knight but it's not defended so i move my queen to b3 first and then i can play rook d5 okay chasing so these are the harder themes um you chase an enemy piece to a vulnerable square um and here we can go queen g1 and then the king has to move to either d6, um, a b5, b4, and then we can skewer the black queen. And it's all forced. So, I mean, these things don't just happen by accident. Uh, whites prepared these in advance. So that's the skill. You know, these tactics, they don't just happen. You need to put your pieces in the right um, position for them to happen. And in terms of defending against these, you need to not leave pieces hanging and you need to make sure you've got all your army connecting and defending each other. Okay, overload. That's when you've got too many pieces uh, in the way. And here, uh, white can take the bishop and then get a back rank checkmate uh, because black's overloaded. And a bit like the lorry there in the diagram. <laughs> okay, defense. Obviously, defense is really important in chess, and most people are much better at attacking. I'm sure that's probably all of you, or maybe 90% of you. I'm definitely better at attacking than defending, for the reason that it's a lot more fun. <laughs> um, but you have to be good at defending as well. We're all going to get bad positions, and you have to be able to defend. So in terms of defense, um, you've got to think about moving away, blocking, capturing, protecting, and counter-attacking. Okay. Um, 
top tip when you see a tactical idea and it looks promising don't just rush and play it because as you play stronger and stronger players they'll they'll have a really really strong defense lined up and they probably want you to go for the the tactic that looks good and then it might not work so um you need to basically really check your moves and take your time and for example here the rook and bishop are in a fork but white can play bishop c4 check and then move the rook and um, here uh, it looks like we're going to lose material because of the pin on our queen it looks like we can't move the knight but actually we can because we move the knight black takes our queen but we don't care because knight a6 is checkmate and then also you can do a counter threat so rook a uh, sorry rook b1 and we're attacking the bishop and then if they take our knight we take their bishop okay here we're defending against the fork so we can play bishop to g2 and then we're not going to lose material and here we are going to block and protect we're putting the queen on e3 so strong players will plan these defenses far in advance of a line so you need to really make sure that what you're playing is going to be good and that your opponent hasn't got um, a good defense in in mind and this is a common one actually defending against a pin um, where players can move a piece backwards and defend against the rook because if black takes the bishop we've got rook takes b8 that's very common use the knife use the pin board <laughs> Yeah, lot, lots of funny names for chess ideas. Uh, so here we've got the discovered attack, the counter combination. Oh, I like this one. So you can take the knight, and then if black takes our rook, we've got knight e8, forking the rook and the king. And then the big question is, how do you spot tactics? Um, I mean, some of you are really, really good at this, um, but you can always get better. Tactics are hard. So, I mean, you should be practicing your tactics every day. Um, using the puzzle trainer or whatever books you like to use. Um, we're going to do some of those um, at the end of this session. Um, but loose pieces drop off. So like I was saying earlier, don't put pieces where they're loose unless you really have to. Um, I was once talking to a very strong grandmaster and he said, you know, we just don't think like that. We put pieces um, so they're coordinated and defending unless we're absolutely desperate. Um, so... If your opponent has got loose pieces, then look for ideas. Loose pieces drop off. Uh, vulnerable king, look for checks or mating attacks. Uh, pieces lined up along the same line, look for pins and skewers. So a bit like that first example that we went through, the rook and the king were on the same diagonal and it, it just smelt dangerous, even if you couldn't see it immediately, it just smelt like there was a problem. Um, and there really was a problem and he was, not happy. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to read all of those out, but hopefully you're aware of this. And we've got the cannon here, which is pretty nice. Queen f8, um, king takes five, and then, oh, or g5, and then rook takes f5, winning the queen. So that's the introduction to this month's material. And there's some um, tactics books here that are really, really good. Um, and there's some stronger ones here as well. And um, we've actually got Grandmaster David Smurden coming to the session at the end of the month uh, to talk about this book. And I think I asked you this before, but has anyone swindled their opponent? I'm sure most of you have. <laughs> yeah, because they, they always say the, the hardest games to win are the ones you're winning. Because when you're winning, you relax. And when your opponent is um, losing, then they're desperate. So they're going to try everything and they're going to take risks because they're already losing. Um, so you've got to be alert and you've got to not stop concentrating when you think you've got a winning position because things can very easily go wrong. Okay, so that's the introduction to this month and hopefully you've read through that. Um, next week, you need to be working on the, uh, let's see the tactics here. And um, the week two tacti tactical puzzles if you click on that, I link to you to the study and they're all there set out for you. So it's the level one questions followed by the level two. Um, so just do your level um, and that'll be great. So what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to do some, we're going to do some questions together on Lead Chess 
and then we're gonna have a bit of a challenge i like these challenges but my challenge is for you guys you should know that you have to get green ticks so when you do this independently i don't want to see any red crosses because it's about doing them precisely not just guessing what looks like the best move uh, far too many people think they know the answer play the move and then it's wrong and i'm sure you've done that in a game go on someone admit they've done that in a game they've played the first move that looks good and then realized it's absolutely rubbish <laughs> and i have as well so we need to train ourselves to slow down and think about our moves because chess is complicated so we'll do a couple together on my screen and then i want you to do I'm going to give you the link. I want you to do them on your own and you can share your screen. I want to see what, how many green ticks you can get right um, in the time without any of those nasty red crosses. So we're on the intermeso ones um, here. So this is going to be uh, black to play. Now privately message me so that everyone can have a think. And I did integrate a timer on Zoom. So I might try and see if we can use that. We'll just check it works. Did work. Um, let's see. I think it's the first time I've used it, but it should work. Um, I'll put it on no audio. Don't know whether has that come up for anyone. Cool. Okay. Except I can't see it anymore. <laughs> You'll have to tell me when the timer runs out. Okay, I've given you three minutes. What should black play here? I don't just want the first move. I want the full variation. It blocks the screen. Oh, okay. Okay, all right, I'll take it off. Let's take it off. I'll stop sharing for a moment. Hmm. Not sure. Okay, let me share back. Um, let's, um, let's just go back to my old fashioned way then. because then I won't block it. I'll put it in the right position. Thank you. Okay, what should black play in this position? I think I'll give you three minutes. There we go. Okay. Some answers coming through. Thank you. We got one correct answer so far. So I'll um, leave you guys to think. I am always telling you to take your time, so it would be unfair of me to rush you. Good. So, yeah, Kenneth and Chris have got it right. Yeah, not just the first move, please. Variation. Yeah, good. Yeah, this is one of those moments in the game where um, you might just automatically take that night, but you've got to be aware of what's going on. And obviously it's a bit easier because you know the theme and nobody's going to be telling you in your game the theme but you've got to be looking to see whether there's another move you can play in between. And this is where the, the process of looking at checks, catches of threats um, occurs. Make sure you've checked everything rather than automatically recapturing on E6. You never know, E6, taking on E6 might be the right move, but I'm just telling you to consider your options. Okay, 50 seconds left. Quite a lot of correct answers. Uh, yes, Jason, it is right. Your first move is right. Um, yeah, Anna, Bodhana. Yeah, Rhea, good. Kushal, good.
Okay, so 15 seconds left. Um, message me your answers, please. Dylan, that's an illegal move. <laughs> Try and get your notation right. We're looking from Black's perspective. Okay, so um, lots of people found bishop takes knight. So that's the intermediate move because uh, we'll go for it in a moment. But if, if you just take the knight, then um, white can take on e6 with check. But we want to take here because if they take with the queen, well, I don't think anyone actually wrote this, but what would you play if they take with the queen? Yeah, f takes e6. And we are improving our position because the queen can't take on e6 with check. And we've got discoveries on the queen using the f file. Um, so that kind of forced white to take with g pawn, which I'm sure you can all agree white didn't want to do. And now what, what are you going to play? I row and wrote that, well done. Okay, so we now take the knight, um, but we've, we've done some damage to white's pawn structure. And in this position, what would we play? Definitely not king h8, because I don't want to lose a bishop. <laughs> yeah, rook f7. Okay, so if we just go back, um, I'll be able to move. So, you know, these moves are important, these intermediate moves. So don't just rush and pre-move if you're playing online. You've got to look for these intermediate moves. So what I want you to do is do these tactics. I'm going to enable multiple screen share and I want you to have a go, but you need to get them right. So I want a, a row of green ticks. I don't want to see any X's. So I want you guys to be thinking about your moves. So I'm going to put the link in the chat. Uh, when we do this, I'll, I'll stop the recording because um, I'll be looking at different screens. Um, but it's really good to get into the habit of slowing down and thinking about your moves. So I am going to stop the recording and stop my screen share. And we're going to have a go at this. <laughs> 